Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video, we're going to talk about complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let's get started. First, let's recall that to find the eigenvalues of a matrix, we first solve the characteristic equation. So as we find the determinant of our matrix, minus lambda times the identity matrix, we set that determinant equal to zero, and we solve for the roots. Now when we take that determinant, we get a polynomial. So we're essentially finding the roots of an nth degree polynomial to find these eigenvalues. And when we find these roots, we have three cases. One, we can have distinct roots. So in other words, my characteristic equation might look like lambda minus one times lambda minus two equals zero, in which case I would have eigenvalues of one and two. Two different values, distinct eigenvalues. But I can also run to a characteristic equation that looks like lambda minus one quantity cubed equals zero. In this case, my eigenvalues would be one, one, and one. So this eigenvalue would be repeated three times. And the question we came up with in this case was what was the dimension of the eigenspace when I found eigenvectors related to lambda equals one. And now finally we'll get to our last possibility. We could have a characteristic equation that might look like lambda squared plus one equals zero. In this case, if I subtract one on the other side and take the square root, I would take lambda equals plus or minus the square root of negative one, or plus or minus i, a complex value. So how do we deal with complex values and complex eigenvectors? Let's take a look at a problem. So here's my matrix, and I want to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for this matrix A. So once again, I will start off with a characteristic equation. I will start off and find the determinant of a minus lambda i. This would be the determinant of negative one minus lambda, two, negative four, three minus lambda. Now to calculate this determinant, I will take this product, plus eight, so that's minus a negative eight. Now I'll actually do this multiplication, and I will get minus three, minus three lambda, plus lambda, and plus lambda squared and all that plus eight. So it looks like this simplifies to lambda squared minus two lambda plus five. And so what I'm trying to find out is when this determinant is equal to zero. Now normally I try to factor that polynomial, but as I look at it, I can't see the right values to factor with. So I'm gonna have to put those, that equation into the quadratic formula. So my roots are gonna be lambda equals a negative b, so that would be two, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative two squared is four, minus four ac. a is one, c is five, so four ac would be 20. I'll divide that all by two times a. Since a is one, I get just the value of two. Now I simplify. This looks like one plus or minus one half times the square root of negative 16 but the square root of negative 16 is really just 4i. And if I take 4i and divide it by two, I get 2i. So in this case, it looks like I simplify to one plus or minus 2i. And these would be my eigenvalues. These would be the roots to that characteristic equation. Now notice, if I have lambda one equals one minus 2i, I would have lambda two equal to the complex conjugate of the first eigenvalue. In this case, it's one plus two i. So the complex conjugate of a complex number has the same real and imaginary parts, they just have a different sign in front of that imaginary part. So once again, let's remind ourselves a little bit more about complex numbers. If I have a complex number that looks like a plus b i, I call a the real part, and I call b the imaginary part of that complex number. And you should note that that imaginary part is actually a real number. B is the imaginary part, not BI. So just some things to recall about complex numbers in general. So now I have the eigenvalues. My next step is to find the eigenvectors. And so just as before, I'm gonna choose one eigenvalue. This time I'll say when lambda one equals one minus two I, that I will plug this into my matrix and I will solve the homogeneous equation that looks like a minus lambda i times my x vector equals zero. So vectors that satisfy this homogeneous equation are the eigenvectors. So what is this matrix A minus lambda i? 
Well, it looks like this piece, but now I'm going to plug in my lambda value of 1 minus 2i. And I will get the following. I will get negative 1 minus my eigenvalue, 1 minus 2i, 2, negative 4, 3 minus my eigenvalue. Notice I'm using parentheses here so I don't forget to distribute that negative sign. And this is just augmented with the zero vector. So we'll just clean this up a little bit here. Here I have 1 minus a negative 1 is negative 2. Distribute that negative sign plus 2i, 2, 0. And then we'll get negative 4. And over here we get 2 plus 2i, 0. Now normally at this stage, I would reduce, I would row reduce this augmented matrix to find the solutions. But even in the previous examples, that process was really unnecessary because I knew, I knew that second row would always have to be a row of all zeros. Because that's the only way that this system could have non-trivial solutions. And those are the eigenvectors. It's the non-zero vectors that satisfy that equation. So taking this into account, I know that these two rows are multiples of each other. Now that, that might not be very clear in this case, but actually if I took that first row, for instance, and multiplied through by negative 2 minus 2i, I would get something that looks a little more similar here. And then I could show actually they are multiples. For now, I'm just going to take it that they are multiples. That's the only way I can have eigenvectors. If they are multiples, then they're really just giving me the same information. So I don't have to look at both equations. I am just going to grab one equation, doesn't really matter which one, and write out that equation. This one says negative 2 plus 2i, that quantity times x1, plus 2 times x2 equals 0. And now in this case, I'm going to solve it for whichever variable is easier to solve for. Since I don't like to divide through by complex numbers, that can get a little tricky, I'm going to solve this one for x2. I will get x2 is equal to, we'll see if I minus 2x2 to get the other side, I have to divide through by a negative 2. So in that case, after I divide through by negative 2, I would get positive 1 here, minus i, all that stuff, times x1. And now when I'm writing this, really I'm treating x1 like it's the free variable and I'm expressing f2 in terms of x1. Now once I've established this, I will just go ahead and write out my solution. It looks like x1 is free to be any value, but once that value is chosen, x2 becomes 1 minus i times x1. Now of course I'm just going to choose a value for x1 to show one eigenvector, and I'll choose something nice and easy, like 1. So one eigenvector would be 1 and 1 minus i. So if I gather up my eigenpair now, I have my eigenvalue that was equal to 1 minus 2i, and the associated eigenvector, which is 1 and 1 minus i. Actually, I'm going to write that into a little different form. Since I have two different pieces to these complex numbers, a real and imaginary part, I'm going to write this in kind of a parametric vector looking form, but instead of separating them by the free variables, I'm going to separate them by their complex pieces. So in other words, I'm going to write this top value as 1 plus 0i, and then I can think of this as the sum of two vectors, the vector 1, 1, minus i times the vector 0, 1. And when I write my complex vector in this way, I'm going to call this first part the real part of the complex vector. And the second piece over here is going to be the imaginary part of the complex vector. So this is my first eigenpair. Now normally at this point, I have to go plug in my second eigenvalue and go through that same process again to find my second eigenvector. But for complex roots, we actually don't have to do that because we realize that the second eigenvalue is just the conjugate of the first eigenvalue. In other words, it's 1 plus 2i. It turns out that the second eigenvector is just going to be the conjugate of the first eigenvector. In this case, it's going to be 1, 1 plus i times 0, 1. So in this way, it saves me some time. I don't actually have to calculate that second value. So now I have both eigenpairs. I found the eigenvalues, and I found the eigenvectors in this complex situation. So that concludes this video. In the next video, we're going to learn what we're actually going to do with these complex eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Thank you.